Hello everyone, Razorblade Mango here, and today I wanted to talk about Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. More specifically, I want to talk about the, I guess, the best word I can use is, it's not exactly controversy, but it is, I guess, hullabaloo around it over the last few days. This video doesn't have any real structure to it. I kind of just wanted to sit down and talk about this whole thing because I find this situation to be rather interesting. So if you haven't heard, we finally got the big inflow blowout for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which is the long in development game from Rocksteady, who of course are the now famous studio behind the Batman Arkham Trilogy and the reaction was surprisingly negative to it so my own reaction to this whole thing the game was that I think I was rather muted I'll go with that word I think I was rather muted and you can Go back and watch my reaction to the state of play and see that I didn't really have a, an extremely negative reaction to it. I was more just, oh, it's one of these. It's pretty much exactly what, it's almost exactly what I expected to be when I had heard that it was going to be a live service. And when I saw that leaked screenshot from about a month ago showing that there was going to be an item shop and a battle pass. So, I can't say I was surprised by what I saw, but my own reaction was, was very muted compared to a lot of people out there. I saw a lot of people take a knife to this game's throat. I mean, the reaction to it has been just very harsh. And outside of some DC fans and some people on the, the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League subreddit, I don't think I've seen a single positive consensus from different pockets of fans and, and interests. And most of the internet seems to have harshly, very harshly, rejected this game. And I must admit... I am kind of happy about that, even if my own reaction wasn't as harsh, anywhere near as harsh as some of these people. Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League is... It's fascinating to me. Because now that I've seen much more of the second-to-second -second gameplay and its design structure, it's very clear that this has gone through a lot. And I do mean... A lot of corporate interference over the years. A lot of its ideas and mechanics seem to have originated from a committee of suits at WB. And what I also find fascinating about it is that it's coming out during a rather sobering come down from the live service gold rush that we've had over the last half decade or so. And it's especially interesting that this is coming off the heels of failures from high-profile studios like Anthem with Bioware, like Marvel's Avengers with Crystal Dynamics, like Babylon's Fall from Platinum Games. And that's just a few out of the list of failures in the live service genre. And now, here comes Suicide Squad killed the Justice League just bumbling behind after the party is already over. And a lot of the, the patrons are already passed out on the floor, blackout drunk. And you'd think somebody at WB, or at least somebody would, would tell these boardroom of suits to get a fucking clue and realize that this does not need to be a live service. I, I don't think anyone at WB 
And I'm putting more of the blame on WB for this than I am Rocksteady because, again, it's very obvious that a lot of corporate interference went into this. What with everything that's just in the game and the belabored development that it's had. I think somebody at WB should have realized that they could have still made an ass load of money from a story-driven co-op Suicide Squad game. I think you could have used that as a selling point that this is not a live service. Just go, hey guys, this is a one-and-done multiplayer Suicide Squad game. Optional multiplayer. That is very story-driven. That has a complete satisfying narrative. No live service crap, no battle passes, no item shop, all cosmetics you unlock in the game via challenges and stuff like that. No live service. And I think that would have appealed to a lot more people than this. And I really don't, <laughs> I want to just go up to anyone at WB that had a hand in making decisions for this game and kind of tap them on the shoulder, shoulder and go, Hey, um, have you ever heard of a game called Marvel's Avengers? No? Let me show you how that turned out. Because if Marvel's Avengers went like that, how it did, I can only imagine how this game might go. And like I said here, like I said in my even in my reaction to the state of play, I personally, and this is just me being very honest, I don't think the game overall looks bad. I genuinely thought something like Marvel's Avengers or Anthem looked worse than this. I even remarked during my reaction to the state of play that I thought the gameplay, while not the most inspired, you know, compelling thing, it at least looked better in the second to second gameplay compared to Marvel's Avengers and Anthem. It's flashy. It looks like there's a lot of mobility to it. Just in that respect, it looks fine. I don't want to say it looks great. It looks fine. But while I don't think the game overall looks bad, I do think it looks very unoriginal, very uninspired, and desperate. In fact, I, I think I'll go with desperate as the, the main adjective for Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League. Because... I can, whenever I watch this footage, I can practically smell WB's greed on this thing. This thing fell out of the rotting live service tree and seems to have hit every fucking branch on the way down. It's, it's got everything. It's got the required online connection, even, even for single player, which is stupid. It's got the irritating gear score stuff. It's got the wacky cosmetics, it's got the rotating item shop, it's got the battle passes, and it even has the attempted justification with the tired, it's just cosmetic, excuse. And I'm also going to assume that this will have a $70 price tag when it comes out, along with the deluxe editions and the collector's editions and the exclusive skins that come with that. This is WB after all. And WB obviously is desperate, there's that word again, desperate for a live service that they can squeeze a ton of money out of, and they're going to throw Rocksteady on the altar of sacrifice to get it. And it's nice to see, you know, I've talked about a WB multiple times on this channel. It's nice to see that even after all these years, WB Games hasn't changed a fucking bit. They're just as money-grubbing and pathetic and clueless as ever. And another thing I find interesting to think about with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is how well it's going to perform commercially. When I first talked about Marvel's Avengers, when I after I'd played the beta and what a horrible experience I had with that, when I made my rant video about it, I said that I'm very certain that this is going to be a huge success and none of my critiques are going to matter. This terrible looking game will not matter. People will buy this shit and eat it up like it's cotton candy. And that did not happen to my surprise. It was a success initially. But the thing with live service games is that you need to constantly, constantly, repeat again, constantly 
bring out quality new things for players to enjoy. That is the sacrifice of being a live service. You want that excessive amount of money that you can get from one? Then you better have the manpower, the know-how, and the roadmap, and a, a damn good plan to support it. And Marvel's Avengers did not have that. And it fucking died. It took a few years, but eventually it will die. And that's, to me, shocking. Considering that it's Marvel's fucking Avengers. Doesn't surprise me that Anthem died. Doesn't surprise me that Babylon's Fall died. It really surprises me that Marvel's Avengers died, because I figured the brand name alone would save that thing from the guillotine, and it didn't. And if that game could be sent to the gallows, I can only imagine what's going to happen to Suicide Squad kill the Justice League if it's not the most amazing live service on the planet. If it's not one of the most amazing things that people have ever played. If this game does not make its player come like 50,000 times during it, then it's fucked. And, you know, I say that sardonically, but it, it really needs to be a fantastic game to survive. Because like all gold rushes, especially with games that are coming out on the tail end of them, we, have, we already have our successes in this field. We have them. We've had them for years. We have Fortnite. We have Apex Legends. We have Final Fantasy XIV Online. We have Call of Duty. We have lots of live services that make lots and lots and lots of money. And what's also finite is time. And I really doubt a lot of people, unless this game is phenomenal, are going to stick around with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League when they are already hooked on other games. I really doubt this game is going to get people to leave things like Fortnite, or Apex Legends, or again Final Fantasy XIV, or Genshin Impact, Destiny 2, you know? I'm sorry, this is this is the risk you run of doing a live service. It needs to be phenomenal, or it's going to fucking die a painful death. And to me, it's just sad to see Rocksteady fall into this trap. And I, I have a strong suspicion that they were pushed into this by WB. Because I have a hard time believing that this came from the same studio behind Batman Arkham Asylum, Batman Arkham City, Arkham, Arkham Knight even, even though I'm not a big fan of Arkham Knight. I, I just look at this game and there is nothing about it that I see that reminds me of what I loved about Arkham City, which is one of my all-time favorite games. I don't see that Rocksteady spirit here. What I see is just a generic unoriginal third-person shooter that just so happens to have a DC skin slapped on it. And in what I said in the state of play, I still believe it now. This game to me, it looks like us like a crackdown mod. You know that game Crackdown from Xbox? It looks exactly like that. Except it's got Harley Quinn and Captain Boomerang and Deadshot and King Shark. And Man, it, it, it's sad, because there was a time when I would have bought anything from Rocksteady, no questions asked. And now, I look at this, and I just feel nothing but pure apathy towards this. I absolutely will not be buying this. And I, I'm a pretty, not hardcore DC fan, but I like DC a lot more than Marvel. And I look at this, and I just go, oh, oh no, 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 that's, uh, that's a, that's a pass for me, chief, uh, that ain't gonna happen, <laughs> you're, you're not giving, you got my, you got my money for Hogwarts Legacy already, and you're definitely not, but you're not getting it for this, and you know what, for all the, the issues that I have for Hog with Hogwarts Legacy, 
At least it's not a live service. At least it's not trying to pimp my wallet for more money and bombard me with psychological warfare with the battle passes and the live service shit and the, the FOMO and it's a normal video game. And WB could have had a normal video game on their hands with the Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. But instead, they chose to go down the live service route because they are absolutely, here's the status of again, desperate for a, a success in this field. They want it so bad. And I really don't think Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is going to be the thing that they're looking for. And on a final note, this is already a downer of a video, but I'm going to end it even more with a downer. As if all this wasn't bad enough, I find it really depressing that this is going to have Kevin Conroy's final performance as Batman. I mean, what a... What a... What a send-off for a legend, you know? To have your final role as Batman be in this. Yeah. Man. Uh, fuck. It sucks.